Hi there. In this tutorial, I'll be looking at some of the regulations, policies and procedures that you'll have to be aware of when working in the education environment. In this tutorial, I will look at some of the laws that you'll come across and have to abide by. Let's start off with some legal issues. In this section, I will cover the Data Protection Act, Equality and Diversity, Health and Safety and Student Welfare. OK, the Data Protection Act. This is a law that governs individuals and organisations that store and use data. This includes personal data such as names, addresses, credit card details or anything that can be used to identify people or organisations. In the Act it says that data should not be shared with anyone without the consent of the owner. You should only keep data for as long as you need it. We shouldn't be keeping old patient files or customer records. These should be destroyed as soon as they're not needed. Another part of the Data Protection Act says that we should not duplicate data. If we have the information once, it should not be replicated or stored elsewhere, as this can create more risk if it gets into the wrong hands. We should always keep data safe. If it's saved on a computer system, we need to make sure it's encrypted, password protected, the best virus protection, and also some firewalls to stop hackers getting into the system. If the information is physical, i.e. paperwork, it should be locked away, safe, out of sight from the public. That means if patient details are on a notice board, they've got to be in a private area and not viewed by anybody else, for example. Equality and diversity laws ensures that all individuals have an equal opportunity to learn whatever their ability, disabilities, financial status or culture. Working in education, we should always challenge discrimination amongst people and promoting equality and diversity as we go along. We would achieve this by adapting any lessons, activities or assessments with our learners so that everyone has an equal opportunity and an equal chance to participate and progress. Health and safety laws ensure that everybody has a work environment that is safe and free from harm. Classrooms, assessment areas, training centres need to be fit for purpose. Is the room big enough? Are there any obstacles that could get in the way? Is the room too hot? Are the desks a comfortable height? Does everyone have the adequate training to use certain workshop machinery? Are people wearing suitable clothing? All these things need to be planned for in order to comply with the health and safety laws. Student welfare, safeguarding and confidentiality is everybody's responsibility. Assessment results or grades, disabilities and information about learners' private lives must remain confidential. As you may be aware by now, there are some things that must be passed on to relevant people or bodies but it's your job to make sure that it's done professionally and that only people required get hold of this information. This could be a disclosure of abuse, signs of poverty, drug or alcohol addiction, for example. OK, let's look at some standards, policies and procedures you may come across when working in education. Your training provider that you work for will have many internal policies that you have to work to in order for them to make sure that you are delivering quality teaching and learning. They may have some sort of marking policies to ensure learners get prompt quality feedback. This could include how long it should take for learners to get their marked work back. In what format should they get it? Is there a feedback template the organisation uses? Are there any instructions on how it should be recorded? Do you have to import marks onto a central database, for example? There will be some sort of quality assurance that the training organisation goes through. This could be that the organisation requests marking samples to check your feedback is accurate. This could be peer or colleague observing your practice, or it could be a peer or colleague shadowing you as you do your daily job. There will most likely be some regular standardisation meetings where assessors and trainers will all get together to share best practice and their opinions on certain criteria you are assessing. Awarding bodies, Ofqual and Sector Skills Councils will all have their input into qualifications delivered. Ofqual is a government organisation that validates and recognises all UK qualifications. 
They are categorised into levels of difficulty and state what type of transferable skills that are required. They also provide guidance on how much time should be spent teaching certain units. This standardises the amount of work students have to do across all qualifications of similar weight and value. This ensures that a level certificate in ICT is roughly the same amount of work as a level 3 certificate in education and training, for example. The sector skills councils design national occupational standards within their area of specialism. For example, the IMI, the Institute of the Motor Industry, validates that the units and qualifications taught will give employees enough information to be able to do that job. They will also say which units are required and which units are optional for apprenticeships in that field. Employers who want an apprentice in motor mechanics need to be confident that if they take on an apprentice and a training provider, that there is an organisation that knows the motor trade inside and out, making sure that the apprentices are being taught what they need to know. Working in education will need to check that the qualifications we teach still fit with any skills council frameworks in that area of specialism. We may also get some useful advice or resources to help us teach and assess in that area of specialism more effectively. Now, awarding bodies, for example, Edexcel, OCR, AQA, are the people that certificate our learners. They will explain what should be taught, roughly how it should be done and examples of how it should be assessed. They will also explain how evidence should be packaged and put together. As part of an agreement with an awarding body, you will have to provide samples of work and marking evidence to help them with their own quality assurance processes. This will check to make sure that a training organisation is doing its job properly in accordance with their guidelines. All these laws, policies and procedures are relevant to anybody working in education and you will need to be aware of how they impact your job role in this sector. And thank you very much for listening to this tutorial.